Hello. What's going on? Not too much. How about you? Hey, we're we're living we're living through it. Nice to meet you. For sure, you too. So, where are you located? <laughs> uh, I actually live just outside of Appleton, Wisconsin now. Okay. Um, okay. Which I was in Madison for uh, a while before this, but some work and family stuff kind of brought my wife and I back here. Okay. She's from so. Well, I really dug the the new album, and I before we delve into that, I want to know how did you get through the last three years as a jazz musician through COVID, and how did it change you? Uh, that's a good question. Um, well, um, to be perfectly honest, like from a financial perspective, I got through it by teaching lessons here on Zoom. Yeah. Um, so I had had. You know, a decent number of students. I was living in Madison when the pandemic hit. Um, and luckily, most of them were willing to keep at it um, through COVID and doing it online. And, you know, got to the point where we kind of figured out and made it work pretty well. And I actually still have a handful of students. I haven't lived in Madison since like late in the summer of 2020, but I'm still actually teaching like yeah. three students who live down in that area. Yeah. Um, so that's the main answer. Um, other than that, um, playing wise, like I still am not playing as much as I was before. Um, you know, I'm putting more energy into fewer performances, I think. So try and really uh, make the ones that I do play count. Um, but also it's partially that I moved during the pandemic. And so I'm still sort of feel like the new guy in the in the music scene around here. But yeah. So five plus four, how does it feel to have a new album out now that everything's opening up? We're in a new kind of post pandemic era. Yeah, well, it's great. Um, this project has been going on for a while. Um, I actually started writing all the music back in 2019. Um, and I had a grant in place to perform it during the summer of 2020, which obviously did not happen. Um, and the initial performance got delayed uh, over a year. So we finally did the first performance in October of 21. Um, and then it's it's kind of a difficult project to get together, just nine people, you know? Yeah. Um, so we've only done it live, I guess, three times in three years. Um, but I always imagined recording it, um, and we did get around to that um, early this year, so in January of this year, um, we recorded it um, in a couple different sessions, and then, um, yeah, it will be out shortly, which feels great, because it really has been, you know, four full years, basically, since I wrote the first music, so... Um, yeah, I got to get some shows. I'm working on. Some, I also just had my first child. Okay. Um, just less than two months ago. So, uh, nice. I, yeah, we did do kind of a CD pre release show um, last month, uh, kind of here, um, kind of like northern ish Wisconsin. Um, but I'm working on a couple more, like, kind of, they'll just be belated release shows. I feel like I can, you know, given the new child i can kind of use that as an excuse to push my release shows back a little bit but we're working on some stuff so hopefully we'll be able to play a live two or three times like probably early next year but so yeah. why the title five plus four yeah well i um had never worked with strings before um and i have done i have two albums with a jazz like modern jazz quintet um and so my, my initial conceptions of this were just, let's add a string quartet to this um, kind of traditional quintet format that I'm used to. Um, so that was kind of just, you know, the, the sort of more traditional, at least instrumentation wise, jazz quintet plus the string quartet. So five plus four. Um, and it's been interesting. Like I, I had, somewhat mixed feelings about using it before I kind of came firmly down on using that as the title because I didn't want it to seem like I was thinking of them as like two separate things, right? Like it's not like I want it to be like, here's the jazz part, here's the string part. But 
um, you know, uh, as a jazz composer, I'm used to writing for jazz groups. So like I was learning about the string quartet as I was doing it, trying to figure out how to kind of get that um, ingratiated in a way that made sense. Um, and yeah, five plus four, I guess that's where it comes from. But. So what are you hoping the listener gets from this album? Well, um, I, that's a good question. I guess, um, what I hope they get is to hear, like, I know a lot of people, and I did some like informal, um, just like friend surveys and stuff back when I was first starting to think about writing for strings, like what jazz with strings albums do you think of? Um, I got some really good responses, but a lot of people will say like, Clifford Brown with strings or Charlie Parker with strings, these kind of classic jazz albums that are really good, but what they really are is it's like kind of a very specific type of string orchestra with that featured soloist that just kind of performs over the top. They do a lot of ballads and stuff. Um, and it's nice and it sounds really good, but that isn't exactly what I was really going for. Um, so I, did also kind of dive pretty deeply into a lot of kind of this more modern jazz concept of um, putting strings with uh, more traditionally instrument instrumentationalized, <laughs> it's not a word, but um, jazz groups. So uh, like one really good example is um, there's an album by Fabian and Almazan called Alcanza. Um, and that, again, Fabian's a pianist and he's got a drummer and uh, Camille Mesa sings on that, I think plays some guitar. Um, and there's a bass player, but they have a string quartet in that group that's really part of it. Like it really makes for a huge amount of what's going on. And I guess that is my, my main thing for listeners. It's just like, there's not a whole lot of music out there like this, where it's uh, this modern jazz aesthetic that has strings in it um and i guess that's what i was trying to do is just make more music like that because there's just not that much of it so yeah i this morning over coffee i was listening to gil evans with miles and it was really yeah. nice yeah those guys yeah. they they were they were quite a duo yeah i mean i love that stuff but um yeah listen so, to a whole lot which is a thing yeah so speaking of you know, kind of the journey. How did all this begin for you? Where were you born and raised? How did you get into the jazz? How did it start? Well, um, I was born not super far, about an hour away from where I live now in Ripon, Wisconsin. Um, and I actually come from a family of musicians. My dad, um, my mom uh, is a piano player, organ player. She teaches piano at home, but um, my dad, it, uh, he retired recently, but he was a a, for almost 40 years, he taught music at a small liberal arts college in Ripon. Um, and before that, actually, he was part of a, he's a trombone player, and he was part of a mildly uh, well-known jazz fusion group from like the late 70s and the early 80s called Matrix. Um, and uh, so he had been a, a touring jazz musician back in the day. And he still is very involved. He taught jazz, he plays some, and he, he's a, a historian. He's written several books about jazz. So um, I was kind of born into it in that sense um, and just enjoyed the improvising aspect. And um, I went to school here in Appleton at, at Lawrence University and went to graduate school in Chicago, um, ended up in Madison for a long time, but um, I never really did anything else. Uh, I've just been, um, you know, trying to make a go of it, just playing and teaching um, since I finished school. So, uh, yeah, that's how I got into it, I guess. Okay. So what was the first live jazz show that you saw that blew you away? Wow. Well, like I said, I grew up with a, a, a dad who was a jazz musician, so I've been seeing jazz shows live since before I can even really remember um i think I, I mean i can remember a few that were really good um i saw joshua redmond when i was in high school 
Um, I remember there was like a Lincoln Center small group that came and played around my hometown when I was a little kid that had Nicholas Payton in it um, and Joe Lovano and Diane Reeves. Um, I remember that. I was only like five or six years old at the time. But I would say the first time that I saw a jazz concert that was really sort of like uh, like life changing, you might say, in sort of an inspirational way was actually when I was a freshman in college. Um, I saw uh, Terrence Blanchard's band. Um, and that actually, Fabian Amazon, who I just mentioned, played on that show. Um, and I had kind of been listening to a couple of his albums, probably just because I knew he, he played at Lawrence where I was a student. Um, and so I had kind of been checking out a couple albums of his and there was something about the way that he doesn't write all the music for his bands, like back then at least, um, everybody in his group would write music. And there were a couple of people in that band that just really clicked compositionally with me. Um, and so I got super into Terrence Blanchard and then kind of like followed the tendrils out. Like I checked out everything that like every member of his band was involved in. Um, and that I think is the first time that I really remember like seeing a concert that had like a noticeable change on my development afterward. Um, I also do have to just say, when I was in high school, I saw Kenny Garrett play um, at a high school jazz festival in Ann Arbor. And it was super fun. He was amazing. His band was amazing. Um, everybody was just shredding so hard. And just that environment with a whole bunch of high school students was, it was really fun um, to see that group. And that was another one that sticks out. So on this journey that you've made to being a professional jazz musician, what do you like the best about it? What do you look forward to the most? Well, I mean, there's a lot of things that are um, fun for me to do. Um, and I actually, uh, another thing is I've, I've really come to embrace the teaching aspect of it. I teach part-time at um, a small college. Um, I, I do jazz ensemble there and even teach a class and I've come to really enjoy that. Um, but I think I would be lying if I didn't say that it's just, especially because the opportunities are fairly rare, but when I'm able to get the bands that I really have invested a lot in the bands that play my music, which isn't super often, like it's probably down to like maybe five or six times a year I get to do a show like that. Um, at this point, mostly just because the people who play in those bands are pretty spread out. Um, but it's those shows that uh, feel like they have the most payoff. Um, and I always make sure to have really good bands play with me. And um, I remember somebody, I don't remember who said this originally, but I had a teacher say it to me that it's like, uh, always make sure you're the worst member of your own band. I've taken that to heart a little bit. So um, everybody who I always play with just kind of lifts me up a level. And, um, it always feels feels good to do that. So, so why do you love jazz? Um, another good question. I think the reason I love it, which is going to be different from the reason why a lot of other people love it, but I think like the whole... Um, the spontaneity of like the uh, the uh, creation and interplay that happens while improvising, um, especially when the whole band is kind of on, um, that to me is like the coolest part of music that I've ever gotten to do. Um, but it's not just that either, because I, you know, I'm a composer, so I spend a lot of time thinking about, um, you know, like uh, blueprints, basically, like how is this song going to develop, things like that, and getting to those moments where that stuff pays off too. Um, that's another reason. That's not specific to jazz. That's why the first thing that I think of is the improvising aspect of it, because that is unique to jazz music. But um, for me, 
that's the thing I think is um, just the way that when a band clicks um, and cool unexpected things can happen um, but there are a lot more reasons I could give you but that's the, the main one so let's get to the essence of who you are. Everyone has a perception of you, family, friends, students, fans, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Who do I think I am? Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess th this is also something that you wrestle with, especially as somebody who is... Um, you know, wear a few different hats, even just within being a jazz musician, right? Like I teach, I play, I write, um, and I've done other things in the music world too. Like I've even like been a grant writer for a nonprofit organization, things like that. Um, and, uh, all of those things are kind of different. Um, but I guess if I were to define my identity in, in a single way, it would be the fact that you do all of those things. So I always think of being a professional musician. I've heard other friends describe it this way too, is sort of, it's like uh, your life is like a quilt where you have like different little boxes that are the different things you do that you kind of stitch together to, to make your whole overall picture. Um, and especially compared to like friends I have who aren't musicians, you know, um, for a lot of people, it's like you have a home life, and you have a work life. Um, and that's not something I identify super well with. Um, maybe I'm starting to with the two month old kid that we have, but um, I think that actually probably defines who I am better than anything else is the fact that I have to wear different hats. And um, yeah. Okay. I like it, man. So if anyone wants to pick up five plus four, learn about uh, yeah, live shows, anything about your world, where can they go? Well, I do have a website, pauldietrichjazz.com. Um, that's probably the most reliable place. Um, you won't see any shows on there at the moment, um, but I uh, will be adding them as they get um, put on there. Actually, just yesterday, I put up a new post about five plus four. Um, which just gives a little bit of background about the album it has a link to, um, I know the, the first kind of single from the album is now available um, everywhere you get your music. Um, and I even actually, I, I made available on my website for just for super cheap. If there are any composers out there who are interested that you can buy for five bucks. Best place to buy the album is on Bandcamp, so uh, with the cell phone to Shifting Paradigm Records. Um, and on their Bandcamp page, you can find this album. And Bandcamp is just a great thing. Uh, lots of people are aware that when you stream music, artists get a special And when you buy music, Good thing. Paul, thank you for opening up. Thanks for talking about the new album. I really enjoyed it. Thank you for talking about your life and music. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Joe. It's great. Yeah, you great. bet.